stop, and then you lost trust again. The dishonest thing happened, and then the fault Game four. Early happened. Now look, it's not UFC's fault that it's the commission stopping its decisions, but in the mind of Nate Diaz, I created this ish. I brought this dog into existence. Masvidal's only a thing because I created this to happen, and now you're trying to hurt my name and maybe stop me from having a chance to win it. So in the mind of Nate Diaz, which is always going to be affected by temperamental bits of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. I mean, I, I mean, how do you really describe it? To try to understand what he's thinking, although he's probably jaded and hurt in that regard, but how does that play into where he would fight again? He, he would have to get back into a level of trust. My, my view on the whole thing is, and this comes to, I mean, I, if I have been guilty of anything in the last few years in giving opinions in this sport in any kind of a public way, I have carried water from the Diaz brothers. Not in a way where I'm like, I need to go and support them because that's what I do, but because I, I genuinely believe those things. But as a general rule, every UFC fighter, especially the headliners, they have their ability to maximize their earnings and other ways of... Uh, public disability is suppressed in certain ways. It's magnified in certain ways by the UFC machine. It's suppressed in certain ways, particularly on the wage side of things. So like, when those fighters never fully get satisfied with the amount of money they're making, they are absolutely right. I support them 100%. So I say that, all, all to also say as a DS supporter, something feels off of it out this for me. I'm a little bit tired of it, if I can be honest with you. I mean, look, given the caveat that there is some kind of suppression going on of their wages because the UFC is a bit of a monopsony, um, I, I, I'm sympathetic to that, but he just came off a situation where you saw that Dana White and the UFC went out of their way to exonerate him, which they have you not. think he's jaded and sort of... Uh, probably a little bit, but they went out of their way. Look, look, look no one is harsher on the anti-doping authorities than me, but they did at least take the public step to exonerate him, which they haven't done for others. Then they created a title out of nothing for him. They put him in a headlining role. They gave him all the promotion he wants to. They, they put him in New York City. He probably made a ton of money from it. It's like, dude, on some level, participation in the machine is required. I don't winning, winning is kind of, it's like you have to win every time, or you might as well winning proof, but you gotta win enough, you gotta do a little bit here on your end of the, of beyond just the marketing of it and getting people to care. You have to do kind of win a little bit. I mean, look, it's the ultimate fighting dot, dot, dot championship. It is rooted into what we evaluate. It is rooted into what we care. And look, if he's a fighter who made a bunch of money and he doesn't want to fight, this is not me saying you have to honor what me or the fans say. You gotta live your life the best way you want. And all those damage those guys have taken, they have a right to come and go as they please. I'm not suggesting otherwise. But as somebody who likes it when they fight and cares about their interests, this one to me felt a little off. I was a little bit looking at this one being like, Really, dude? Again, we're, again, we're here for this. What more? What, what, what more? Without a union or the court busting the, this 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 monopsony up, what more is possible? I honestly don't know. I'm 100% uh, agreeing with you. I'm, I'm sort of with the set. You know, it's all okay at this point to be critiqued and say, Nick, you need what else do you want? I'm trying to get in his head and trying to figure out like what motivation. It doesn't seem to be money. If it was money, he would have filled in those three years. Well, it is clearly money. Anybody. It is clearly money. It's money to a degree, though. It's money wrapped in loyalty and, and an appreciation for what he brings. And you, yes, you could 100 argue they just rolled out the red carpet of appreciation. They created the belt. But you've got a defensive person here who seems wounded and engaged and just waiting to go, see, I told you. I told you that this is all a trap. I told you that they don't care. So under that, guys, how do they book his next fight? And if that fight can be booked, it's going to be still crucial. Because yes, he's got the Connor trilogy to eventually catch on. Right now it's not the time. Connor's got to prove himself and seems to still have one more run at least at the title level. Who the heck is Nate going to fight next that would give him the main event placement and money he would desire? And a meaningful enough fight to actually main event potentially a pay-per-view well, that wouldn't insult him when he's in a spot thinking, of my last four fights, I made eventually to be enough at the garden and set records twice with, with Connor. Right. You owe me the so it's gonna be a precarious walk right, right. now. So because look, if he's gonna stay stubborn and sort of dig on this, he actually may never fight against the three dollars. No, no, no fight again. To Diaz is always wise to let the game cycle through a little bit. You know, who was Jorge Masvidal uh, in January 1st, 2019? He wasn't the guy that everyone was just sort of really caring about. Look at him now, things have changed. So fortunes for certain fighters, they'll bubble up, they'll change, and we'll pick their spot. I'm not worried about that. And also, behind the scenes, who knows what the UFC told him? He might really believe he's entitled to a rematch. Jorge said he would give him a rematch, and then the UFC is just saying, no, in boxing, if you have two, two A or two A sides, or A and B, however you want to put it, the two high-profile fighters like this, and they want to fight each other, the promoters in all likelihood would accommodate both short of some kind of sanctioned body getting in the way. And so I understand that frustration. 
here's what it looks to me. It's probably look, man. There is just some difficulties between the Diaz brothers and the UFC that they just can't get over. And I understand that too. All I can do is speak as a Nate Diaz sympathizer, and frankly a bit of a fan of his work. It was a little fatiguing for me to watch that. And I, and I, I would be lying to the audience if I came on here and said I didn't feel that way. I do feel that way. As much as I understand where he's at, that he should live his life absolutely the way he's earned it, I was a little disappointed by the whole thing. He knows his value now, and what well, he well, has. And, it, and it's, you know, it's clouded by by his beliefs and stuff to sometimes to a larger degree than they actually are. But he knows his value. Well, I don't see him ever being somebody that will stay active and eventually become a punching bag to the stuff. No. I feel like he's only going to continue to sit and wait for that perfect opportunity. Right. I just don't know. And, I, and fair to what you say about the Jorge Mazo, I wasn't Jorge Mazo until this year. Who's that person right now that really justifies Short of Connor, I don't giving know. him that type of money that would make him not fired up? They did the BMS thing, but Masvidal has it or won it, and they never, they may never see it again. So what do you do next? What next, Michael? What do you do? You, you wait. Or they come to him and say, well, don't worry, Tyler Shot, he might take that. I know for a fact they offered him to fight against Tyler Woodley. You can say what they want. I know for a fact they offered it to him. He just asked for it. A lot more than they were willing to pay, and so eventually they denied. I don't think you can get too mad at him though, because this is what. No, no, I'm not mad at him. But, no, no, are you kidding? I'm not mad at him at all. Man. I'm just simply saying that's what that's what ended up settling. Do you have more sympathy for the UFC and the issues that they've had with it? No, I think no, no. I think the D has decided virtually all of those. It's just at some point, dude, the clock is ticking. You're gonna be 35 if you're named Diaz in April. You know what is it you really want? And again, maybe he wants to do exactly what he's doing. In which case, fine, case closed. But I, it's like. The Diaz brothers are allowed to feel the way they're allowed to feel, and the UFC is allowed to feel the way they're allowed to feel. Well, so are we. So are we. So are we, the consumers of the Diaz product. We are allowed to feel the way we feel, which is as much as I am sympathetic to them, and truly I mean that. They have been done wrong for a very long time. I've been saying it for years. They made a title for the guy, man. Like, it's like on some level, I don't know, I just I don't know how you appease them. I don't know. Okay, I mean, how do you appease a guy who smokes two joints in the morning and smokes two joints at night, right? You're here. You're two and top of peace and two and top of war. Uh, like, this guy. We apparently have a YouTube question that's real. Mr. McGregor and others play the same game. Isn't it all hype? What do you think? Uh, yeah, it's all hype and positioning. To a degree. Nate Diaz does it in a weirder, sort of, almost backwards way compared to the normal person. Yeah. Yeah, in the end, in the long run, it's all sort of, I'm walking away, I'm going, you know, I'm going out to receive what it's kind of the time. It's all sort of lumped in the same. I think, though, with me, there's sort of an extra level of like, craziness and stubbornness. I mean, maybe there's no different kind of a dude being crazy stubborn in, in what he does as well, but, um, there's resentment built up between I think both Diaz brothers and UFC. I don't blame them for it. When you say consumer of Diaz, you mean fighting or those kind of CBD? Uh, I've had the CBD. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good company. All right. In any event, let's move on to the next topic. There were some fights over the weekend. You wouldn't know based on our rundown, but here we are. UFC Moscow took place in Moscow, Russia. Not the greatest card in the world, but the main event was to beat Megamed Sheriff off. Well, obviously, I'm not defending anything, but certainly getting his sixth UFC win in defeating Calvin Cater in a, uh, in a, I would argue, relatively close bout here, Brian Cater. The question is, is Zabit Megamed Sheriff ready for the winner of Alexander Volkanovsky versus Max Holloway? I would argue to you that he is, he's probably not based on what we have seen. Now, here's what I would mean. Yeah, if you look at something. Okay, so if you look at the rankings, because they're all, people, they seem to forget this. It's like, how are paddle, paddle shots handed out? Who's winning? Who's at the top? And frankly, who's available? Really? Are you, are you just ready to fight? It's often a pretty key consideration. So, he's near the top of that division in a very important way. He's absolutely, no matter what, on that short list. Brian Ortega's ahead of him. But Brian Ortega, if he beats Korean Zombie, will only have to win one time to get another title shot. And especially if Max wins, they're like, really, they're going to do that? Now, if Volkanovski wins, it gets a little dicey. My hunch is, if uh, Korean Zombie, after beating Hanato Moicano, comes back and also beats Brian Ortega, I suspect they'll set him up for a title shot. But Zabit is kind of right there. The question, though, is not whether he's worthy of a title shot, in as much as it is to me, like, how would it really go? Six wins in the UFC is nothing to sneeze at. He's got submissions, I think, in two or three of them. One of them spectacularly with that silhouette stretch he hit on Brandon Davis in the Contender Series. At the same time, dude, watching this fight, did you not get the feeling that somebody like Max Holloway, who can go the distance through championship oh, no! who can define the boxing exchanges on his terms, who can stuff takedowns, this guy continuously in the Bokniak fight, in the Stevens fight, and now in this fight, he doesn't exactly fade in the third round, 
but it's style changing. They went over it on dissected. You look at the numbers and all the way looks like they shoot through the roof for the opponent. So his numbers stay constant, but his opponents turn it on. See, that tells you something is up. That never happens. For the elite guys. So here's my point. Against two guys who can volume strike, who have good defense, who have good takedown defense, and have better cardio through the fourth and the fifth round, I think they're bad matchups for the current version of Sabine. He's young, he's young, he can grow, he can develop. We'll see how things go with him. But if we have to learn any lesson from Kevin Lee and Jaron Till, it's to pump the brakes on the criticism for guys who are still in the early to mid and even in the late points. At the same time, based on what I saw in this fight, this fight alone, does that make me think he's a legitimate threat to either Volkanovski or Holloway? No, it does not. I think it depends on how you perceive this fight, okay? Because the, I'm almost the exact opposite feeling coming off this fight. No, you have to sort of lay some things down at the ground level foundation, and you can take them for what they are. But to be honest, afterwards, and saying, I had an illness, it affected me. I didn't have the stamina in this case with the sickness to go hard in that third round and, and, and sort of fight at my normal pace. I get the best you can bring up all these stats from the other fights.